Hi, this is a video about the archetype of the wounded healer, which we're first going to discuss. And then we really want to make it very visceral for you. We're going to do a meditation with the arrow essential oil so you can really feel it. And we're trying out different formats. So maybe in the comments, you can let us know what you think about the different formats. So. Okay, so this format is question asking. So I'm going to ask the first question to Florian. And my first question about the wounded healer is... How would you describe the concept of the wounded healer to someone if it was the first time they'd ever heard of it? Well, in a nutshell, in contrast to the belief that in order to get someone else to change, you have to push them to change, because then the natural function is there's a pushback. It's this Taoist idea that when we change in ourselves, that change ripple out into the world. Okay, perfect. So what you're saying is that the change has to come from the healer. Well, I think it's more that we have to allow for the change in ourselves and in our client. If we are too attached to the persona, the role of the healer, where we think the client needs us and the client, we have all the answers for the clients, then we're not willing to see our shadow side, our hidden side, which is our wound, and conversely, at the same time, we unconsciously keep the patient, the client, trapped in the passive role of receiving the knowledge from this persona. And they are then at the same time unaware of their own inner healer that's in their shadow. Okay, perfect. Thank you. So my first question for <laughs> you is, how would you say that Yero interacts with the psyche? Okay, so, well, first of all, let's just put it into context, context that we are going to be using Yarrow as the sort of plant archetype of the wounded healer. So Yarrow, how it interacts with the psyche is that uh, different plants have different beings behind them, in a sense. They have certain knowledge, certain ways of being that is echoed in their morphology, but is actually the being with it be beyond the plant. Um, and it's with that aspect of the plant that we are going to interact and have an effect of the plant with our psyche. And we do that through what I call intuitive plant communication. We do it with oils, we can do it with plants and trees. Um, and it means that we have to, um, in a way, change our consciousness slightly. It's not the normal consciousness where we're talking about things, we're using the intellect. We have to let go of that and allow the plant intelligence, which with essentials is much easier than with um, other plants in the forest because we've got the smell, and so the plant wisdom is carried on that smell. Some people say it's the soul of the plant. I believe it's one aspect of the soul of the plant. Um, and so by allowing ourselves to open and uh, turn off the analytical mind, be like a vessel, open the heart doorway, um, we can practice and start to enter into a soul to soul communication with the plant and in that way the plant who is as plants are masters of communication can actually enter into intimacy with us and we can um, then have an effect from the plant um, and the effect that we'll be having is based on each different plants um, knowledge and way of being so yarrow is for us the wounded healer and yarrow has a strength an integrity an ability to heal wounds um uh, yarrow also knows about opposites that we can see in its morphology so all these things um can trigger movement in our psyche can trigger some i don't want to say understanding because it's not really it's not the understanding on an analytical way it's a um, understanding on a deep, visceral, soul, and cellular level. Is that okay? Okay, so now I have to ask you a question. Right, so my next question to you is, how and when did you realize that you were a wounded healer, and did this affect your work? I think it was the most pivotal point in my professional career. I had um, started a private practice about eight years earlier. And even before then, I always wanted to be the most available and the nicest psychiatrist, provide my patients with all the knowledge that I'd learned and practiced. 
And I read this book by Edward Mitmond. Uh, he was an alchemist in New England, and the book is called The Alchemy of Healing. And this book was like the scariest book I ever read because I felt like a surgical mirror was being held up to me. I saw myself described in the pages. And in a nutshell, what he was saying was that if the wounded healer doesn't acknowledge their own wound, we unconsciously keep the patient trapped in the patient role. And that made me realize that I had kept my patients trapped in the patient role. And uh, within a few months after that, I closed my private practice because I felt I needed to work on myself and that this way of doing things in this professional setting with the inherent power differential and hierarchy just perpetuated that role, the mask of the physician, of the psychiatrist, and at the same time forcing the client into a very passive role, and I knew I couldn't do that anymore. So in a way you were both forced into roles, both the, the doctor and the client. I think that's widespread in the system, and, yeah. and it's many aspects of it are shaped throughout society. You go to people because, and it's not just Western medicine, I think it's important to remember that many people who offer herbs or yeah. uh, other holistic healing modalities their inherent message is, you need to see me, you need to study with me so that you learn these methods from me. I think my number one message is that we each have this ability to heal ourselves and to transform ourselves and to discover our personal myth. We each have that within us. We each have individuation within us. We just have to be reminded of it. And the inherent structure of saying, I'm the expert and you have to do as I say, keeps people from discovering their personal myths, regardless of what modality the expert is in. Thank you. So how how has your understanding of the wounded healer changed and how, how has that changed you? So my understanding of the wo wounded healer has changed since, well, I was teaching the wounded healer as a um, modality when I was teaching at the herbal school in France I was teaching herbalists or to be herbalists and I really felt it was important to to teach them about healing themselves um, and so I did that within a practical context of herbalism but since then I could say that my journey has um, intensified my journey has deepened my journey has become 100% my personal myth and the more I journey into my wound and the more I work on the, my wound, the more gifts I receive from my wound and the more understanding on a deep visceral level about who I am and where I come from and what my role is in the world is developing. So, um, you know, I'm at the point now where I have to thank my wound for the great gift that it's given me. And I know that that journey will, is a lifelong journey, but I feel that like a spiral, I've done another one of those cycles and deepened my understanding of the wound, the wounded healer as the archetype of the self. And so I'm in honor of it now rather than thinking, oh no, not more that I have to, you know, deal with. Now it's an honor. And when I do, stuff comes up and I do have to deal with it and it's difficult, there's more of a witnessing part of me that is able to also tell that part that's suffering that this is part of the journey and it too will pass. And on the other side of that, there's also a gift because I think a lot of energy gets tied up with our wounds and as we work through them and integrate them, this energy is released and that energy becomes creative energy for life. Okay, so now I have to ask you another question. So my next question to you is, how does an awareness of the wounded healer change the way, or how can the awareness of the wounded healer, if it becomes more mainstream, how can it change the way that medicine is looked at today, or how we see medicine today? Can it change the way we see medicine, and how would it change the way we see medicine today? Well, I think medicine is heading in the opposite direction, because it's becoming more and more technological, and more and more complicated and sophisticated so that many people don't really understand the principles behind uh, what they're being treated with and it raises the whole question of how can you give informed consent if you don't understand what that means. So I think medicine is actually disempowering people more and more and I think that's where that hunger comes from. 
But it's a very hard path, uh, I think, to continually look at oneself is frustrating uh, because we keep sort of chipping away at ourselves and we keep having to let go of maybe dearly held assumptions or pretenses about ourselves. Um, when this comes up, when this, this journey of individuation through the wounded healer comes up, I'm reminded that one reason to keep going, even if it's really hard, is because the alternative is insanity or death. Yeah, and I think once you get, if I can chip in, um, once you get going on it, there's no turning back, is there? I mean, you can't just say, well, I'm not going to do this anymore. because. Well, I think that's where the insanity yeah. or death comes in. If, yeah. you, if, if your psyche comes calling and you ignore its call, life has a quick way of dispensing. Yeah. Okay, great. You've got to ask me my last question. Okay, my last question is, what's the one thing you want to make sure people remember about the wounded healer? Mm. Well... Well, I think it goes back to that don't forget that what's hidden in the shadow of your wound is your personal myth. So in order to really truly be who we are authentically and as whole as we can be, we don't have any choice but to confront and work with and feel the wounds we're carrying. But like I said in my second question, that's the yeah the most important thing for me is that don't forget that within but those wounds also carry our gifts, our biggest gifts, our most beautiful gifts, and the gifts that we're meant to share with the world through the understanding and the feeling and the acceptance and the integration of our wound that we're carrying, we become ourselves and we then share something precious with the world, which is who we really are. So that's the most important for, thing for me in terms of the wounded healer. And I've got, I know we're only supposed to have three questions, but I've got one more for you, I think. Mm -hmm. um, yes. Can you explain how you see the wound as also being your gift? Well, I think you already said it. I think that one thing I've learned over the years is when there's an energetic threshold emotionally, when you in your psyche come across an area where like, oh, I'd rather not open that can of worms, I'd rather not open that Pandora's box, that hesitancy is actually a signal that that's exactly the direction we need to go in. The direction that pushes us to grow, our ego is afraid of because the ego has this instinct, oh, this means I'm going to change, and the ego doesn't want to change. Mm -hmm. And so this... If we can, instead of saying, oh, I don't want to open that kind of room, saying, hey, that tickles me, that alarms me, or I don't want to go there, what's there that I need to explore? I think that's really a, a good practice to get into. And I think uh, one way that that comes up is, I think, in a, in a session with a client, is getting to that place of not knowing. You know, in the traditional roles, psychiatrist, doctor, other healers, there's this inherent expectation of you have to have all the answers. So when we reach that point inside where we say, I don't know, and there's this silence that comes, that silence is a real doorway. And um, I think that we need to keep, we, we keep having the opportunity. That's why it's a gift. We can say, no, I don't want to open that kind of forms. We can say, oh, what's this? And it is a continuous process, so I think that's another way it's a gift. Okay, great. Um, and I just got one more question. Sorry, cheated. The last one is, how does Yarrow resonate to you as being a plant architect of the wounded healer? Well, it's a very multidimensional plant, so it's a very complex plant. It's in the most complex botanical family. It reconciles all these opposites. It has the very soft leaves and the very strong stalks. Uh, Matthew Wood calls it the master of blood because it both can dissolve blood clots but also can coagulate wounds against blood flowing again. And blood has to do with embodiment. And the, uh, in the original I Ching oracle, what was used to generate the hexagrams were yarrow stalks. It has something to do with embodiment and really the coagulatio stage of the alchemical process of 
being here. And I think that embodiment of coming into the world is really the essence of the wounded healer. We can refuse to engage, we can live in our head, we cannot feel, but when we really embody, that's when we embody our personal myth. And the only way to embody is to feel and to feel our wounds and not shy away from them. So Yarrow speaks on all these levels, and as we're going to see in the meditation in a few minutes, much more than what it does according to the textbook or according to the chemistry, the personality of it really touches us, digs up areas we didn't know were there. But I think even more importantly, in terms of the sort of discernment, you know, dissolving blood when necessary, coagulating blood when necessary, creating boundaries, it really creates a boundary that makes it clear for us what our wounds are and we're not taking on everybody else's stuff. Yeah, great. Thank you. Okay, so now we're going to do a meditation. I'm going to drum this time. So this is a yarrow that we hope to be able to have available in fall. Thank you. And um, if you have a yarrow essential oil, just smell it. That's how we like to work with the spirit of the plants. And just sort of start by centering yourself. Sit up straight, legs uncrossed, your sit bones really just rooted on the ground. And maybe you've already seen our concentric circle diagrams with the different bodies, the physical body, emotional body, mental body, spiritual body. However you imagine that, just we're going to tune into those different parts of ourselves and make sure you're not interrupted. And just let's start with taking a couple falling out breaths where you inhale slowly through your nose and then in exhale through your mouth and use your diaphragm to breathe. And I'll already start smelling the arrow. And just remember that your awareness, what your heart centered awareness, is a giant vessel, and your being is a vessel. And the aroma of the yarrow enters your being. And remember, we don't just smell with our nose. We have olfactory receptors in every cell of our body. So smell with your whole body. And as you start smelling the yarrow, tune into your physical body. The arrow may give you a very clear sense of the boundaries of your physical body. And you can scan, maybe start with your toes and go up through your feet and your legs. And just smell the arrow with all those parts of yourself. And the arrow may go to certain areas quickly, so just notice that. And there's no need to interpret that or to change that or to fix that or to judge that. Just notice which parts of the physical body the arrow is drawn to. And you may also, through the arrow, become aware of blind spots, areas of your body that you haven't been aware of that have been in the shadow and just notice what those are too and there may be areas that are kind of congested or congealed or stagnant so just be aware of all of those while the arrow travels through your physical body. And with your next breath, shift your awareness to your emotional body, however that makes sense to you. And if your mind gets stuck on an emotion, just focus back on your breathing again. And just see where the arrow takes you in your emotional body, what it, where it's drawn to first. And again, the arrow may also highlight 
areas of your emotional body that you haven't been aware of, that have been tucked away or hidden in the shadows. And just acknowledge those. And just enjoy just seeing your emotional body in your awareness without being swept away by it, without being chased by it, if you will. Your awareness is this tranquil vessel in which you can be aware of it all. And with your next breath, when you're ready, shift your awareness to your mental body. However you imagine that. Just let the arrow take you, bring your awareness, and see where it first takes your awareness to. And then the arrow may also reveal areas that have been hidden or tucked away. Sometimes it's these thought patterns that we're engaging in all the time that we were completely unconscious of that we were engaging in them. And then with your next breath, shift your awareness to your spiritual body, however you think of that. Let the arrow reveal to you where you're at in your spiritual body. And again, through the clarifying boundary healing action of the arrow, you can see how your spiritual body connects with your mental body and your emotional body and your physical body. You can really see the alignment and the union of all these seeming opposites similar to the structure of the arrow. So just make one last note of what came up for you, what the blind spots were and the areas that the arrow highlighted. And when you're ready, slowly open your eyes and just come back to this reality. Now there's another exercise you can do where you can take a drop of yarrow oil, put it on your hand, rub them together and just cover your aura with them. And you should do that twice a day, um, maybe do that for a few weeks, just to really get really clear on your boundaries. Okay, so there we go, Yarrow and the Wounded Healer. Thanks for listening to us. And don't forget that we sell beautiful essentials and sacred attars that we source for this type of work on kathysattars.com. We have an online school where we have some great uh, classes and our school is called aromanosis.com. Those links will be below the video. And um, yeah, please like if you like this video and subscribe to our channel and um, we'll see you next time for another delve into aromatic shamanism for the future. Thank you.